Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Dawn Does Life and today <laughs> it's all about keeping Dawn accountable. I said I was gonna use June as my catch up month uh, because I was so far behind on this painting and I have several others that are not finished. Um, so this is the Deborah Malcolm evening stroll. I'm really liking this picture. The last time we caught up, I was in this bottom uh, right hand, sorry, left hand bottom quadrant. Just about finished that. Um, and then it took me a couple days to do this one, which is very quick for me. And then this one, I've had a really busy week, so it's taken me a bit longer. So I thought I would do a whip and chat and catch up with you guys while I do this. So good reason to sit down and uh, do some diamond painting, I think. So I think what I'm gonna work on is L. Uh, I created a section in three. Actually, you know what? No, let's just do the T. We'll do the T. That's the inside of here. Uh, so all this empty space in through here. And then there is some uh, T in the sun down here. So let us do that. So I don't know how uh, your last little while has been. I can't remember when I posted my last video, but I think it was the end of May. Uh, so it is now the 4th of June. And in half an hour, it'll be the fifth. <laughs> it's 11.30 at night. I ha um, did a skip shift tonight. I've actually done skip um, for the last several nights. Where is the tea? Let me find the tea first. Otherwise, you know me. I'll just get all distracted and kerfuffled. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, I, I worked skip the last uh, several nights. Uh, and my daughter is um she was going to move middle of the month and now it's looking like she, well it is it has been planned there she's moving next saturday so one week from today oh my god i am like you know i'm both happy for her and then extremely sad for me <laughs> two things can be true right <laughs> anyway i um i'm really excited for them because like they're both, both her and Ben are doing so well and he got a job in Calgary and I'm excited for him because I mean he did that extra master's program at the University for Engineering and it paid off and but I'm just like so devastated that they're going out of province and I'm trying to keep it together. I've, I've lost it uh, with her a couple times like so far as just being upset and getting all emotional and crying my eyes out and, and she's under stress and um, I'm definitely feeling some stress <laughs> and I don't know it's just gonna be so weird not to have her in the city but so exciting that she's going off and exploring a new city you know anyway so anyways I um, I've worked skip I'm gonna leave it there because like I, I just I don't want to like dwell in it because it just upsets me <laughs> in a both good and bad way. Um, so I did skip the last couple of nights and oh my God, so yesterday did skip piss me off. Like, I think this was the most pissed off I've been. I have been mad at them um, a few times just for their stupid policies and stuff, but uh, never this mad. I was so freaking mad. Um, so I'm working and um, it was pretty steady. And then I, I get this offer to go out to another city outside of Saskatoon. And it's about 20 minutes out of the city. But anyways, in the past, what we were told to do is if, if that offer came up and it wasn't one that we thought was a fair or doable offer, all we had to do was accept the offer and then contact chat support. And then they would remove the offer and not affect your acceptance rate. So Skip the Dishes is like Uber Eats or DoorDash or I'm not sure what companies exist in the States, but I know some of you watch from the States. So I don't know. I don't think Skip is in the States. So they work off acceptance rate. And if you drop, so it, it goes on, on your previous 10 orders. And if you drop, so you can, um, you can decline two out of 10 orders to keep yourself above 80%. If you fall below 80%, you become an overflow driver, um, and which means that 
any offer that you would receive goes to every other driver that's above 80% before it comes to you, unless they're busy. Um, so the other thing that happens if you drop below 80% is that you're, you no longer qualify for the top up. So depending what region you live in, the top up is different. In Saskatoon here, it's $6. So somebody can tip me zero and the delivery fee can be like $3 and Skip will tip me or uh, top me up to six. It's still crappy, um, but it used to be that you didn't get topped up. But then it also used to be that you could decline as many orders as you wanted to. So I'm not sure which is better here, to be honest. Anyway, so I, I'm sitting at 100% and this order comes up going out to Martinsville and um, I, uh, it was ridiculous. Like it, it wasn't a $6 order. It, it was a decently paid order, but not decent. Um, it would be, it would have been a really good order for somebody in Martinsville, a driver in Martinsville to take that order, but not a good order for somebody from Saskatoon. Let's just put it that way. And, uh, so I contact chat support and I said, you know, like I'm a Saskatoon driver. I don't want to drive out to Martinsville. Um, the, the round trip, by the time you drop it off, you're looking at an hour, and um, that's an hour of, of you being in the city where you could get offers. Anyways, the guy in the chat comes back on and says, we can decline it for you, but you're going to lose your acceptance for it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> that It's always been that we could contact you guys. And um, he said, I need a yes or no from you whether or not you want me to uh, decline this offer. And I'm like, actually, I want to speak to a supervisor. Like, this is ridiculous. I, I'm a Saskatoon driver. I shouldn't have to leave my city, uh, or lose acceptance. That shouldn't be an, like that, that there shouldn't be one or the other as an option. And he said, okay, well, I'm still going to need to know whether or not you want us to decline this. And if you do, then we're going to have to, uh, drop your acceptance. So I was like, what do I do? So I sat for a minute and I'm thinking about it because I'd already accepted it. And at this point, I'm thinking, I don't care how long it takes me to deliver this if I decide to deliver it. But I did decide to deliver it. So um, I went to the restaurant to pick it up. And there's construction all in the north end, which is where I had to go from from the, the west side where I was. I had to go to the north end to pick up this order and then drive 20 minutes out of the city to drop it off. I get stuck. I turned so there's no, there was no way into this restaurant unless you went in the street before and then around the corner and in through their side entrance and the the construction had all of the streets blocked off. I thought they had a back alley. I, I could see a back alley, so I thought it would go around. But no, it was a dead end. So it was just like a it was like stupid. Anyways, um, I'm just about getting to the customer and um, the the skip supervisor calls me. And he was a really nice guy, but he didn't help me. Um, so, I mean, really, what does it matter if he was nice? He was nice about the fact that I was getting screwed over. <laughs> like, wow, that makes me feel so much better. But anyway, so I I told him, he's like, can you explain to me what happened? He said, I can see the chat. I can see the conversation you had, but can you explain to me in your words what happened? So I told him and I said, you know, that's always been the, the case is that we could always just contact you guys and have it removed. Like that, that's ridiculous that they can no longer remove it. And he said, yeah, we actually just did an update. And now he said in the future, what you should do is contact chat and um, like before, well, so if the order pops up, contact chat and then they can take the order off before you accept it. And I'm like, what? I said, you guys give us 60 seconds to accept an order. And if the clock, if the timer runs out, it's an automatic decline. So half the time when you contact chat for anything, it takes them much longer than 60. Like sometimes they're very quick. Most of the time they are not. And most of the time it seems like they don't even read what you've sent. They send you back this pat answer. And he, so I said that to him, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like we're driving at the time that those, these orders come in, we're driving and we, we need to pull off the road at the first available opportunity so that we can look at the order and then decide whether or not we want to accept it because texting and driving is illegal. Like you, you can't do that. So he's like, yeah, I know it really sucks. Um, he said, I, I'll, I'll definitely let, um, the, uh, R and D team know you know, what you're saying. And I'm sure you're not the only one that this has been an issue for. And I'm like, that's helpful. So the other thing that the guy said to me is like, you know, if you accept this order, um, 
we'll get you back to Saskatoon. We'll, you'll, so if you, in, when you're in the city, if they send you outside of your zone, which does occasionally happen, um, actually a little more than occasionally, but it does happen. And so if they send you outside of your zone, they'll give you orders to get you back into your zone so that you're not like using your own gas to get back to where you're supposed to be. And so that's what this guy texted me. And he's like, yeah, he said, I'm sorry, but um, that is the case when you're inside your city. But the second you drive outside of your city, we our system will no longer calculate you as being available to drive. And so I'm sorry, but you're going to have to get back to the city on your own. And I'm like, well, I mean, not like I can't get back to the city on my own, but like, oh, my God. So the guy wasn't even giving me correct information. I should have just declined it and taken the hit, but I was like being stubborn and whatever, just like wanting, wanting to be a good, good team person, but also at the same time, like, I don't know, just wanting to make sup uh, the supervisor aware that this was going on because this is ridiculous. And so I ended up having, anyway, I talked to him for a few minutes, told him some of the issues I had, told him that I think it's ridiculous that they would take the um, chat support. I said, that's our only lifeline. Like well, there's not a number to call in anymore, or at least y y not one that you don't sit on hold for 45 minutes and then it automatically hangs up on you. Like there's nothing for us to do. So the only, uh, course of action we have is to contact through this chat support. And then they don't even have the power to assist us. Like that's ridiculous. I said, you know, it, it would have been one thing for you guys to give this order to a Martinsville driver and then have the Martinsville driver drive to Saskatoon and then back to Martinsville and get paid for it. But to have somebody from Saskatoon have to do it, go out to another city and then, and then be told that, oh yeah, you're shit out of luck. You're, you know, you have to drive back to the city. We can't give you an order until you're back in the city. Like, oh my God, I'm so mad. I was so mad. So I head back into the city and um, I'm thinking, okay, well maybe when I get back into the city, I'll get an order because where I come into the city is on the west side of the city. So I'm in my zone um, right away. So I get into the city, no order comes in. Um, and before this, it had been steady, but um, as most of uh, us drivers know, when anytime you take yourself out of the system, sometimes it takes a bit for the system to realize you're back in and put you back into the queue. So um, anyway, I get back into the city and I'm, I'm like, okay, well, I'm not getting an order. So I'll just head back to the far west side and I get, I pull into the superstore parking lot. And as soon as I pull in, I get an order for the north end of the city for $6. And I was like, you've like what I'm, ugh. So I declined it. So then I went down to eight, to 90%. And I, now I, I now have, I don't have my buffer of two. I have a buffer of one and I, that just makes me so uncomfortable. I hate that. And, uh, I got another order that was a little bit better. It was more in my area. And then I got, and then I sat for half an hour and I was like, done. <laughs> it was like not having it. I was just done. So I ended up driving something like 80 kilometers on my shift um, and did just over $40. Like that is just maddening considering gas prices. And, and the supervisor and I were talking about that, you know, like, first of all, you guys need to reevaluate our top up amount. I said, you sent out an email saying that we're all going to our, all of our, um, delivery fee, uh, like delivery fee, uh, it, it, it's getting raised across the board, but then what does it matter? Because if the person doesn't tip, like the, the, some of the crappy customers don't tip, then we're stuck with the same top up. So like it's really not benefiting us at all. And he said he agreed, but I mean, it felt more like as nice as he was and he was very nice and he listened to me. Um, and we, we had a decent conversation, but, uh, like he didn't end up helping me. So I, I, you know, I made the point that I'm not a driver that feels like you know, skip the dishes owes me everything. I said, but if we're being honest, 
we're the face of the company. We're the ones that meet with the restaurants. We pick up at the restaurants. We take it to the, the customers. We're meeting the customers. We're making sure that we're giving them a good impression on both ends. I said, we should be a team. This should be mu mutually beneficial to both parties, not just to you guys. And you, the way you guys have got the system set up, it's to penalize us. It's if I hadn't taken that order, I would have been penalized. I took the order, I was penalized by them not getting me back to the city. It's just, it's a ridiculous system. It there, it should not be that way. So I ended up ending my shift and just saying screw it because I was just not in the mind frame and like not to toot my own horn, but customer service is kind of my thing. <laughs> and I always, always make a point of making or trying to make the customer smile um, and just being very friendly. And we all should be that way. We are not all that way. I have seen plenty of grumpy drivers. I have seen plenty of drivers that park in wheelchair stalls when they go into restaurants, which drives me up the wall. They don't zip up their bags. That drives me up the wall. How do you keep the food hot in a thermal bag if you're not zipping up the bag and creating the seal? Like, So I know that there are some drivers out there that you know do give us a bad name, but I always, always, even when they don't tip, I'm always trying to um, be very, well, very, very professional and very friendly. And I get really good reviews for it, you know, so it, it works for me, but I guess in the end, does it really work? <laughs> like, like on Skip the Dishes, I don't know how it is on the other platforms. Um, I did drive very shortly for DoorDash, but like DoorDash in Saskatoon is very dead. There, we, there's just not enough business through DoorDash to even make it worth your while. But anyways, I don't know how the other platforms are, but when the customer decides whether or not they're going to tip you, it is not based on your service. It's based on them making the order and deciding at the time that they process the order whether or not they want to tip. So when the, the customers don't tip, it is a kick in the ass to us that are out there making sure that they get their food quickly and hot. You know, like I, I just think that's a kick in the butt and I think it's shitty. Before I was a skip driver, you wouldn't have caught me dead not leaving a tip for somebody. Uh, I just think, you know, you're making my life easier by delivering food for me. Uh, absolutely, I want to tip you. And if I was in a restaurant, I wouldn't even think. Even if I got crappy service, it would have to be pretty crappy before I would not leave a tip. And I'm sure that there have been a few times in my life that I have not tipped because of that. But then to me, there's a reason. And and I also try to look at it too, is people have good days and people have bad days. And if somebody's, you know, making mistakes or just having, I, I just try to assume that they're having a crappy day. If somebody is, is in a bitchy mood, I try to assume that they're having a crappy day and it's not personal and, you know, just move, move past it. Maybe, um, give them a reason to be happy, you know, like give them a nice tip so that they're, they're not leaving the, their job that day going, Oh, what a crappy day, you know, all over. I don't know, whatever it, maybe it's weird. I don't know, but I just think people who don't tip skip drivers are assholes. I really do. I know that I don't like using that language, but <laughs> well, I do use it occasionally, but I think people who don't tip skip drivers are assholes. We're breathing the elements. We're delivering your food in the rain, in the snow, in the heat. We're using our gas. It, it, we don't get paid for the gas. So, you know, just don't be an asshole. Keep that in mind. If you're ordering from a delivery service app and you're not one to tip, just try and look at it from the driver's point of view. Like it, it costs us money. We, when, when we get a, a top up to $6, we are paying the gas out of that. Um, and we are paying our time out of that. So, Sometimes, depending on, you know, how far away you are, a delivery out to your place and back into a busy zone so that we get more orders, $6 doesn't cut it. But if we can get three or four orders in an hour, oh, sorry, I was going to say that, you know, that could, that can take you half an hour and then you have another, one more half hour and you're not even making minimum wage. It balances itself out most times. Most times I make well, I make above $20 an hour, which isn't a huge amount of money, but it's like doable. But it also depends on how many kilometers I'm driving. If you took my hours into consideration the day that I drove out to Martinsville, I made, I think it was about 18 to $20 an hour was the average. But with my kilometers being at 88, like that's, I don't know, an eighth of my tank of gas. 
that costs me over a hundred dollars to fill, you know? So anyway, whatever. Now I'm done with the rant <laughs> about skip the dishes. So I wasn't, I was not going to drive tonight. I was just like still kind of in a foul mood about it. And then tonight actually ended up being a really good productive night and productive both like just for time that the shift flew by, but also um, I made really good money tonight as well. So, but it was a Saturday night. I mean, Fridays and Saturdays should be good uh, money making nights. And like my Friday night could have been, but I was the stupid schmuck that got the Martinsville order that screwed everything up. And the other night, and the other night too, I got this one order. I absolutely hate getting orders inside mall food courts. Like, because the food courts, a lot of times, aren't near the entrances, so you have to walk quite a ways within the mall um, before you get to the food court, at least the ones here. Well, some of the malls, like, actually, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that because the um, center mall, no, sorry, the Lawson Heights Mall, there is, an ent there is an entrance right by the food court, but Midtown Plaza, it's on the second floor of the mall, um, and of course, it's all pay parking downtown. So there's nowhere to park and then you've got to um, walk a mile to get in to pick up at this order. So anyways, the other day I, I got one and I was like, oh shit. I didn't realize where it was until it was too late. I just said, you know, screw it, I'll park. Well, then I walked past this woman who was on something. I say it seemed like, like she was hallucinating. She was screaming at everybody around her walking by, paying her no attention. She was screaming at the brick wall that she was sitting beside and she was blocking off the entire walkway with her, like herself, she was, she was there by herself and then she had like all this stuff. So like clearly somebody who um, exists on the streets quite a bit. I ended up taking the long way around just to not be in her path so that she didn't start with me because of course like all I've got is myself and my cell phone and I just didn't want to deal with that and then you go into the mall and then I had to walk past her again on my way out so I had to go like the long way around to get around her again it ended up being so it, w when the skip order comes up it doesn't tell you that it's two orders or at least I haven't seen that it does um, and so on Thursday night and again tonight I had that where I accepted an order. It looked like a really good order. You go to pick it up, but then it ends up being two orders, which um, still the kilometers were good on it. I'm not complaining. The one tonight especially was um, a really good, it was like driving six kilometers for $17. And that was dropping off at both places. So they were um, in very close vicinity to each other. But I got another order for this same restaurant inside the mall and turn that down. So all of a sudden I'm down at 80% tonight. <laughs> and then I was really panicking because I'm thinking, oh no, I have to accept everything now because if I don't, I go down to 70%, then I become overflow and I don't get any orders at all. And then when I do get an order, I don't get the top up because I'm below 80%. Like it's, ugh, anyway. I wish there were, um, laws like like when I was talking to the supervisor I said there's an increased cost to the drivers to pick up an order now because gas prices are out of control and gas prices have have almost doubled since I guess the war in Ukraine right around that time is is when they started to increase and so there is an increased cost to us uh, skip drivers we're not making as much money the profit is not there anymore um, so maybe, maybe some of those costs should be offset and the, the delivery fees that the restaurants charge should increase so that more money can come to us drivers. And you guys should increase your top up because, I mean, Skip the Dishes makes big money off the backs of the restaurants. There is no denying that. I know every restaurant has a different uh, contract with Skip. They have their own contract. I don't, I'm not claiming to know what every restaurant pays, um, but my husband runs a restaurant here in the city and I know what they pay. And the profits that Skip make off of, a, off of an order made by a customer to a restaurant, um, it's ridiculous. 
the amount that they make. So there is no reason why, there is no excuse for them not to fairly uh, compensate their contract drivers. So while I did skip tonight, my husband went and did his D&D and it was actually kind of cool. He made a one episode part for my daughter. This was a good opportunity for her to go and just have some fun. She's in the city by herself right now. Um, her boyfriend is in Calgary. He started his new job already. So she's been really bored. Um, who he plays with is his sister and my brother, like his brother-in-law and, or my brother-in-law too, his best friend, and then um, some longtime school friends and one guy they found on Kijiji. <laughs> who's been playing with them for years. He's just, he's an awesome guy. But anyway, so she got to go and have fun with uh, everybody and see them before she leaves because I don't know how much time she's going to have to really visit with everybody. She's doing lots of the last minute packing and getting the place ready. And anyway, so I'm glad that she had that. And then too, it was good for her and Greg to have some time because he's been working crazy hours and He's been really tired and yeah, so I'm glad that they had that tonight. And then tomorrow her and I are going to, um, there's an Etsy marketplace. So Etsy sellers selling their wares at a um, outdoor market. I think it's an outdoor market here in Saskatoon. They do it every year and um, I this is the first time I've been to it. I think I joined, I joined that group actually about a year ago because a year, maybe two years ago, actually, um, maybe before the pandemic, because I'm th like, it just honestly, this last couple of years has gone by like so weirdly slow, but weirdly fast. Like it just seems like a blip. Uh, but anyways, we're going to go and check that out, walk around and see what Etsy sellers are selling in Saskatoon here. I thought that would be fun. She actually is the one who found it and said, hey, let's go. So we're gonna do that. And then I'm supposed to have a shift tomorrow night again and I'm not actually sure if I'm gonna do it because I am crazy sore. Like tonight was insanely busy and I mean, that's good, but I just, I feel like I just rode a horse for the last 12 hours. <laughs> Like my muscles are just aching and I have back issues and neck issues and my back, I wasn't even sure if I was going to go tonight because I was kind of sore and then still grumpy too. But anyway, so I did that, I, um, but I don't know if I'm going to do it again tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see how I feel after walking around all day with Caitlin. And then I haven't really had any time to spend with Greg for the last several nights because our, our hours are kind of offset to each other. So it'd be nice to have an evening with him. What else was I gonna talk about? My kitty update. Okay, so this is funny. Um, I posted on Instagram a couple of the pictures. I think uh, in the last video, I might've posted a picture of him. Yeah, I did. I, um, I posted a picture of him. That was him at two or three weeks old. That was at three weeks, that last picture I showed. I actually got, I've, I've got a few more pictures from the breeder now. Um, of him at five weeks and she also posted a video of her petting him and then him rolling over to so she could scratch his belly and then he started purring oh my god he's so cute you guys like honestly I just oh, like, I just am gushing he's so cute but Greg has been um, harassing me and saying that he looks he, what did he say? How did he say it? Because it, basically he looks like a um, a poop disturber. <laughs> That's what I'll say. <laughs> yeah, he's look he he looks like he's um, and he's joking. He's like he knows that he's like pushing my buttons when he says this. So, and I fall for it because it's like how can you look at him and not think he's so adorable? But anyway, I'm like, what do you mean he looks like he's gonna be an evil cat? Um, how could you say that? He's like a baby. How can a baby look like he's going to be troublemaker? So I, I've been sitting for the last several days. It was so funny. We were both having an afternoon nap um, last week and 
he, he was like almost asleep and then he turned my way and he could see me staring up at the seat at the ceiling and I literally was like the, the wheels were spinning I was going through every name I could think of trying to think of a name that would suit him and he said that he without saying me saying a word to him I didn't even know he was looking at me and he's like oh my god you're thinking of cat names aren't you <laughs> How did you know? He's like, I could literally see the steam coming out of your ears. So I've kind of narrowed it down to a couple that I think are really cool, but I think I also have realized that until I spend some time with him, um, it's probably going to take me a few days of getting to know him before I can really say a name that would, or suggest a name that would really, I think, suit him. But Greg, him and his best friend Vaughn have been going back and forth and Greg said, I should call him the Night King. So I don't know if any of you watched Game of Thrones. I'm sure some of you have and some of you haven't, but there is this one scene where a White Walker, the, the Night King, I think, is turning one of the, the captured babies. He's turning one of them into a White Walker. And it's like, I went online when he said that, and him and Vaughn are just having a hoot and they're like, yeah, it's totally the Night King. And so I went online to look at this picture of the baby because, I mean, I, I think I can remember what it looks like, but it's better for, if I have the visual. And I go online and, okay, so I'm going to post the picture of the Night King baby, like, up here. <laughs> and then a picture of what they're calling the cat right now is Aster up here. <laughs> like, it's like their eyes are identical so I totally get it why he said that <laughs> I should go but I'm not naming my cat the Night King like come on anyway like that would not be the character from Game, Game of Thrones that I'd come up with oh, jeepers anyway so yeah we've been having a hoot and Greg is so when he saw the so that was when he saw the three week picture and then yeah he just said he looks like a little poop disturber <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm, he's like, oh, oh, he's so cute. Um, when I posted the video, I don't know. I, I'm not going to post the video because I don't have permission to post the video. And I haven't asked her if I could, and I'm sure it would be okay, but I don't want to make that assumption. Um, but anyways, um, the, the, the video of him rolling over to get his tummy scratched and then starting to purr, it just melted my heart completely. I am so in love with this cat already, and I'm not not suggesting he's not ever going to replace Milo. Milo was the coolest cat in the world. Caitlin and I were talking about that the other day. I mean, I'm sure we all think our animals, our pets, are the the coolest, but I think she just adopted um, from the Humboldt Rescue uh, a cat, and this cat is amazing. She didn't know how old it was. She actually just found out tonight how old it is. So it's a year, just under two years old, a year and nine months. It is so laid back and so casual, but still fun and just so polite and so affectionate. And this cat, the story with this cat was that uh, somebody put it in a box outside of a pet store in Humboldt. He, he almost died actually. He, he, he had some stuff wrong with him. I'm sure that's the reason why this, these people dropped it off, but they didn't even take it to the SPCA. They dropped it off outside of a pet store in the in um, late October, and it was freezing cold, and one of the clerks inside the store could hear the, this cat meowing. So this cat would have been just over a year old when the people who had him got rid of him. And it, they heard the meowing, and they brought him into the pet store, kept him overnight, and then um, turned him into the SPC the next day. And then a doctor, um, apparently there was a fund, um, somebody donated money so that Lucky, they called him Lucky, um, could get uh, doctor care, or uh, sorry, a vet veterinary care. And like, that's so awesome. So they were able to, he pulled through. Um, I guess apparently she was told when she picked him up that it was pretty touch and go. That's why they gave him the name Lucky. And then I also say too that that cat is very lucky that Caitlin was the one that, um, in my opinion, 
that cat is very lucky that Caitlin was the one that adopted him because Caitlin absolutely is in love with him and she loves animals. So she makes donations on behalf of both of our dog, or sorry, both our dog and our cat uh, to the SPCA or the, uh, sorry, the, there's a, also an organization, a local organization called Scat Street Rescue for Saskatoon Cat uh, Rescue. And then there's also, I can't remember the name of the dog one. Um, oh, what did she say? A dog in the park? I think might be the organization and she donates to them uh, on behalf of Milo and Buster and then she just she always has had a very uh, big heart for animals Milo and her were just like so tight as much as I like to say that Milo was mostly my cat really he wasn't he was like mine and Caitlin's mostly <laughs> he loved us both and, uh, and he like had very different tendencies with both of us. Like there were like these special little things that he would do with me. And then there was these special little things that he would do with Caitlin. And yeah, anyway, so Lucky's very lucky to have Caitlin. So they, they took a couple days and they were, um, trying to decide if they were going to change his name. And then they decided that, nope, they're going to keep Lucky. <laughs> this cat is so sweet sweet and playful and a little mischievous the one thing he does is tries to climb her screen <laughs> like so like they're gonna have to get him out of that one for sure so they also decided not to buy a house in calgary right away they've decided that they're gonna um wait for one year um so they uh I think they decided it's going to be a year because they could only find a lease. Like they, they could only find a place that the, the lowest amount of time they could find was a year. But they just, I guess they couldn't find a house right away that they liked and or that I guess Ben was looking at them. And so they just decided that they would give it a year. And I think that's awesome. I'm real, actually really happy that that's the route they decided to take because she doesn't know Calgary. Ben grew up there, but whatever area they live in, I want it to be something that they both like um the area that they are renting in for a year and this you should see this condo they rented oh my god it's like an executive condo it's gorgeous marble countertops island um en suite uh it's a condo um and i think it's an apartments main floor apartment style condo but uh walk-in closet um ensuite bathroom with the dual sinks the tub i am not sure actually i'm not sure if it has a tub and shower or just a shower um i can't remember what she said about that but yeah so she's like super excited and the area that that they rented in is called i think it's cranston i'm pretty sure that's what she called it and there's um, big parks right close to them, and they love going for wa long walks and hiking and biking. They like that stuff, so um, it's a it seems like a really good area. And then it gives her time to get to know Calgary, and decide if that's the area they want to stay in or if they want to go to another area of the city. So, and then, like I said, he grew up there, and his family is there, and and I just I want it to work for. Ben is very conscientious. He is so caring uh, for Caitlin. He's just a fantastic guy. Um, so I don't, I think, like, I wouldn't ever think that he um, would make a decision without uh, trying to include her. But, you know, like, until you live in a place, you don't really know. And I just want her to be happy about it. And it gives her an opportunity to be a part of the process of looking for a house as well. I'm also very jealous because she's moving to a bigger city. <laughs> My preference would be Edmonton, um, although, I mean, I keep hearing people say that they really like Calgary, but I've driven in Calgary and it stresses me right the hell out <laughs> to drive on the freeways in, in Calgary. The times that I've been there and I'm the same way in BC, I feel the same way about the BC traffic is just insane, bumper to bumper, but people weaving in and out, it just is unsettling to me. I'm not used to it here, but I would I would really like to live in a big city. And I never found that, or at least I didn't find that as much in Edmonton. Driving there just seemed a little bit better, easier, less stressful, <laughs> more calm. 
I mean, how can I say it? How, how many ways could I say it? So I suspect this year, if we do go anywhere, it's going to be... I think I might have said that in my last video, actually. It's probably going to be Calgary. I don't know if we'll do any driving trips there in the winter time because I'm not... I'm very... Unsu I've had... My brother was hit by a car. Many of my family have been in, like, pr some pretty... My dad was in a head-on collision. Actually, when we lived in Calgary, <laughs> when I was just young, I think I was in grade one when that happened. So, yeah, that, me and driving and highways and crazy drivers just and Alberta has some pretty crazy drivers but anyway so I don't think winter driving is my my best thing even in the winter time in the city here I don't like being on the freeway um, in the winter time and will oftentimes if I'm driving for skip take the longest way somewhere if it means I don't have to go on the freeway that's the on God's honest truth if you are one of my longtime watchers you have probably noticed that uh, in the winter time, I will do that. Uh, so I did end up getting all the teas done. Um, with regard to the cats, I ended up getting four out of the five cats that were coming around, but the fifth cat has not been around since we caught the last one. So, um, and it took me, I got the first three within 24 hours of each other. And then I got, um, oh, there's my daughter texting me. Then I got uh, the fourth one several days later. I would, kept on putting the trap out and putting out fresh tuna. And I would have to like throw out the tuna because they just weren't biting. But then I moved the trap to the gate instead of the back of the yard, thinking that if any cat walking by on the street, you know, might smell that tuna. Anyways, it worked. I, I got the, like I said, the fourth of the fifth or fourth of the five cats. Uh, anything else? My plans, again, I will just let you guys know, my plans for June is to do catch-up. So after I'm done this one, and I don't think this will take me too long, I am planning on... I ended up talking tonight, by the way, much longer than I thought I would. Um, but I... Um, I'm going to be doing... Sorry, I just was leaning back to look at my table. My Chuck Pinson uh, Sanctuary will be the next one I work on. I want to get that one finished. And then if I still have time in June, I'm going to also work on my elephant, my Spell Queen elephant uh, that I I think I started it over a year ago. I'd have to look at my videos, but it's been a while. It's a beautiful picture, but I've just been so busy with like other events going on and things have been piling up. And it's that's another thing that I makes me feel uncomfortable. Like all those unfinished works are just staring at me saying, you fail. <laughs> You are a failure. You you didn't finish me. Pick me. Pick me. <laughs> Anyways. So you guys, if you like uh, diamond painting videos, I've got also, um, I do, did have a delivery on Friday for one item, but it's at my post office, so I have to go pick it up. I won't be able to pick it up now till Monday. Um, and then I have several more on the way. I had five companies, actually I had six companies contact me and I, I've ordered from four of them and one of them asked me, actually it was, and I won't say who it was actually, they asked me to do a Facebook Live or an Instagram Live and I said no because I'm not super comfortable with that yet. I feel very awkward when I'm doing a live and I want some more practice before I even attempt to do that. I don't want to look, I don't want to make, I want to leave a good impression for them. Um, because they are a decent company and I just, I don't want to wreck it. So I said no to that. And then the other one is a craft site that I'm still humming and hawing on whether or not I want to do it because it's not diamond painting. And while it is still crafting and it would still fit in with, with this, it's not a craft that I'm super excited to try. And so that's another one, like, I don't want to do it just for the sake of doing it. I want to think about whether or not I'd actually attempt to do it. Like, I'm just weighing all of that before I decide. So one of them has arrived, three of them are on their way, and hopefully those will come. And then I will um, have some unboxings to do along with some more whip and chats and just catching up. So that's my plan. If you guys like this video, I would love it if you gave me a thumbs up and also subscribe. You know, all those youtube -y things. At 1500 subscribers, I am doing a giveaway and I'm somewhere around 14, 40 right now. I, I don't have it in front of me to look at it. it. does It fluctuates, it goes up and then it goes down and then it goes up and then it goes down. So 
at 1500 I'm planning on doing a giveaway. If you can help me get there, that would be fantastic. And then I can get this giveaway done. Not exactly sure what the giveaway is going to be yet. Um, it could include a gift card. It could include some diamond paintings. It could include both. I'm not sure, but I'm going to be doing one and that's going to do it for me. I hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend. This is Saturday night for me. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying your weekend and I will catch you guys all in the next video. Until then, bye!